Hello, I'm Soren, as you probably know, and uh, I'm here to give you an update on the product. And thank you, Hanno, for, for those very inspiring words. It's, uh, we have indeed come a long way in, a, in just a year. I had hoped to do a, a bunch of demos today, but you'll have to, to see them later and actually have a little surprise towards the end. So uh, you can actually see some of the things that we're talking about here today. Right, so one year ago, we were at uh, Friheden or Tivoli Freedom, for those of you who don't speak Danish. And it's sort of very apropos, given the situation we're in now with Corona that's limiting our, uh, uh, our way of doing things. But one of the things that we did at, uh, at Friheden was we promised you guys a lot of things. And so it's important for us today to show you that we have actually delivered on it uh, to fully or a little bit beyond, hopefully. So the thing we promised you was to get back to the core, which was based on your feedback uh, as we went out and researched and, and got the, the word on what it is that you liked and disliked about the platform over the years. And the very clear message was we needed to get back to the, uh, to the core, we needed to focus on performance, we needed to focus on back office. And so the first bit, Project Bolt, was all about performance, delivering a new API. Last year, I stood here and showed you sort of previews about how we were thinking it would, uh, it would work. And since then, we've shipped Bolt uh, in its final form. The second thing is the, uh, the new back office, where we focused on, on lifting the technology stack onto a new, more modern uh, platform. The view stuff that some of you will have seen, that most of you will have seen uh, by the end of this year, I think. Um, basically revitalizing the, uh, the backend and focusing on uh, core e-commerce workflows. There will be two talks on the tr uh, tech track that will go into more depth about how we go about doing things. But I just wanted to show you a little bit uh, of what we've actually delivered since we made these promises. In 2020, in April, we shipped e-commerce 9 and we, we did a lot of work leading up to that. There were light, late nights. It, it almost felt like back in the day when we launched the first version of uh, of e-commerce, only there are a ton more people that were actually doing the work. So it's, it was, it was a, an exhausting experience, but also a, a very um, um, also a very uplifting experience. Let me just re put my mic close to my mouth here like that. Um, one of, the reason I bring it up is that the ship date in April was also a feature of WooCommerce 9. So it was super important for us to show you that not only did we know where to go, we were also able to deliver uh, to you the things that we promised. Because in the past, we have been good at having great visions and things like that, but it has been uh, a little troubling to actually deliver the things that we, that we wanted. So April 2020 was a feature in of itself of WooCommerce 9. I bring it up because when we ship version 9.0, it was almost like a, a 1.0 release, right? There was lots of new things, new UIs, new APIs. And so we had to sort of very quickly uh, revamp those, some of those uh, versions. And since this version's in, uh, in April, we've shipped uh, three additional versions, so, uh, so which has sort of taken care of some of the, the, the niggling things. But the big lines were there back in April, and we had very quickly customers uh, joining the joining the new versions and upgrading, which was very very encouraging to see. Since then, we we've gotten a bunch of feedback on it. Uh, the new APIs, the directions. It seemed like a lot of our partners, you like what we're doing. So thank you very much for that feedback, and please keep it coming. Um, our goal here is to listen to what you need. We have a very clear vision of where we want to go with the big stuff, but you certainly help us uh, get there in in the right way. So thank you for that. So what did we do? Well, for Condo, I just wanted to, uh, to create a wall of text for you to show you all the capabilities that we shipped, and it is a lot. So we shipped a bunch of apps to deal with products, variants, catalogs, uh, product pricing, fully multilingual, uh, adaptive data controls. There's a bunch of stuff in here just to give you a sense of what we have shipped since last year for Condo. You don't have to sort of uh, uh, understand all of it or read all of it, but I just wanted to sort of give you a sense of what it is we have done on the UI side. What I didn't include here is all the fundamental things that we have invested in for Condo to make it ready for the future. One of the things that were sort of difficult for us doing UIs in the older version was that there was a lot of legacy in there. Things that had been done, you know, because it's, it had evolved over time, they had not been done quite in the proper way. So building new UIs in versions prior to 9 was very slow for us. But with 9 and the front-end team we have in place that you'll meet on the tech track, 
we've actually been able to lay out some tracks that are much more efficient to work with, which means that hopefully we'll speed up over time in delivering new UIs to you. And actually on the track tech track, you'll also see what it means for you if you're building apps for e-commerce. On the Bolt side, we delivered a search-driven architecture out of the box as promised. We can now hit very fast query times on our APIs. By default, everything is super fast. In our, in our testing, we have queries that go down to 20 milliseconds response time. Of course, very, very important for e-commerce these days. Performance is a feature. You will very quickly lose customers if the website is not snappy and responsive. We delivered a provider-based architecture that will enable you to swap in your own search engines. And I'll talk more about that in the, in the roadmap in a little bit. We have delivered a unified query API that, that enables faceting full text and static queries in one. So the end result for developers is faster turnaround on, on features because you don't have to deal with many different types of APIs to build an e-commerce uh, store. There is only one. And it was actually one of the key pieces of uh, feedback we got from you that you know there were so many ways because we built the platform over so, uh, so many years to do things. So we slimmed that down to one. The final thing is, you know, indexes out of the box, uh, configurable models and all that to enable, you know, the core domain of e-commerce. But the really cool thing to my mind is that Bolt is not a particular, it's not a capability particularly bound to e-commerce. The Bolt feature set is actually something that's ap applicable to many different domains. And it just shows you uh, the, the ideas that go into actually building the platform. We try and build it in an as an abstract way as possible so we can leverage it in many different scenarios. And I have a strong belief that Bolt will feature heavily in our future that I'm going to wrap up the session with in a little bit when we talk about the big picture. By the way, if you have questions, feel free to, uh, to ask them. I have Alberto with me here who's monitoring the chat, so don't worry about that. Uh, and, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. There will also be ample time to ask questions on the tech track later on. So, uh, uh, so feel free to join that. The Bold API in its very simple form basically takes us from what you're seeing on the screen now, simple SQL based API that we came up with 12 years ago, which is insane to think about. And into this model where we have data that's pushed from the e-commerce platform on the left into the Bold API, so it's super fast to serve up. It's ready-made, uh, so we get those very fast response times on Bolt. That's what we shipped in April. Condo and Bolt, delivering on the promises we made to you back in October last year. One of the things that was a, a little bit surprising, uh, and you know, I, I come from a technical background, so of course I have to include code. I'm, I'm sorry for those of you who don't speak code, but my point is actually very uh, salient, both for you who, who code and those of you who don't. Because what I brought here is an example of the old API there under the V8 heading, and what it would take to actually do a query to bring uh, featured products to the front page of a website. And what's interesting is that when we ported our websites to, uh, to the Bolt API, uh, we came up with the, with the second syntax that you can see there at the bottom, which I hope, even if you don't speak code, hopefully you can see that there are very fewer characters, there's less complexity there. So not only is the new Bolt API uh, faster, much faster, an order of magnitude faster, but it's also simpler to work with, which is very, very pleasing to me because developer experience, of course, is at the core of what we do. That is what Framework First is about, being able to extend and customize the platform, and that is what the API should be about. And we actually spend a lot of time discussing what should it look like, and this is what we came up with. And we can even refine the Bold API just a little bit to make it even cleaner. Uh, we could actually remove the little hash uh, access thing there and replace it with an actual property so it looks very, very clean and nice within, uh, within code. So just a, a nice, um, a nice side effect of the new APIs. Uh, Morten Scholle, our cost customer success manager, will talk about migrating from V8 to V9. We've had a bunch of experiences since we shipped this uh, with you as partners moving to the new platform. So uh, feel free to join that if you, uh, if you want to sort of get the, uh, sort of the uh, nitty gritty on, on moving from eight to nine if you're thinking about doing that. So that's what we've done. This is where we were back in April. So I wanted to talk about where we are today. So e-commerce 9.3 came out uh, in um, uh, two weeks, three weeks ago. 
So this is something you can play around with today. And I just wanted to talk to you about what it is that we've done since then. So we had a couple of focuses for, for 9.3, and that was basically to, to enable better integration between the CMS and Condo. So when time comes to pick content, when time comes to pick media, how do we do that in a, in a better way than before? And also bringing all the rest of the CMSs we support in line. V9 was done on Braco first to prove that we could do it. And then the other CMS integrations and accelerators were brought in later on. So that was what 9.3 focused on. So one of the first things that we did is we created a new media picker. And you, why does he bring that up in a, in a high level talk like this? Well, it's important to me to sort of talk about some of the little details that we're seeing here on the screen, because one of the things that really sort of warms my heart is, is the attention to detail that the, team, uh, the teams that are building this have. And so when we look at this, this is an effort of the backend team, the frontend team, and the UX team, and of course, sales and feedback and all that, that brings in knowledge about what it is that we actually need to, to, to build. And just looking at it, it sort of seems fairly simple. We're looking at the media picker that accesses information from the CMS and connects it to products within UComs. But just look at the little arrow there. If you look at one of the folders, you'll see a little arrow pointing to the right. And that little arrow is actually the, uh, the result of you know, many, many uh, minutes and hours of discussion on how should we actually navigate uh, in a structure like this. So the interesting thing here is that you can pick a folder like what we're looking at and connect that to a product. But within that folder, there's also media, right? So, and you might be interested in actually getting to that and link that to your product. So how do we reconcile the need for navigating a structure and also picking within that structure in one go? And we've seen a bunch of examples on it. So what we landed on was basically a model where, you know, you click the folder itself to select it, which is how you would do it on the uh, on the image itself. And the little arrow there is what you use to actually navigate into the structure. And our, our way of thinking here is that you will spend more time picking than navigating. And so the focus is on that. And that is the UX team that sort of refined these models and figure out how, what makes more sense. What's also cool is that if you look at the right uh, top right uh, hand uh, corner, you will see that it says selected one, the little blue button there. The cool thing here is that also part of the UX process, we were able to go in and, and, and think about how we can actually create a better experience for selecting and deselecting. So here, you can bring up a list of all the stuff you selected, remove it, and actually in uh, right now, we've implemented uh, sorting there as well. So you can actually say, well, this image comes before this other image, which was actually feedback we got uh, from, from customers or partners upgrading to the newer versions. And that will be part of 9.4 that's coming out later in the year. The other thing I wanted to show you is how we work with content. And actually, there's not so much uh, else I can uh, add on top of the story from before, which is really cool, because the image you're seeing here and this image there, it's actually exactly the same component doing that work with slight modifications on how we present. So you'll see the folders here in a nice square layout, and you'll see content from the CMS here in a, in a more sort of uh, oblong shape. But the beautiful thing here is, and this is about those train tracks I talked about before, is that what we've built here is something that's reusable for many different scenarios. Uh, and so we can actually sort of reuse these components as we go forward to speed up development. So right now, things are a little slower than they could be. Uh, if we just went down and banged out features as quickly as possible, we could certainly do that. But that's not the way of e-commerce, right? The way we do it is we, we build features in a smart way so we can reuse over time. And, and build capabilities that are cross-cutting the entire platform. Hope that makes sense. So this is the content picker that goes into the CMS, not just the CMS, it goes into Umbraco, it goes into Sitecore, it goes into Sitefinity and leverages those CMSs to connect content and commerce, which is at the core of our mission. A couple of years ago, we entered into a new partnership with Progress Software in the US. They're like a multi-billion uh, revenue company that have adopted e-commerce to be their default e-commerce engine. Very proud about this, uh, this partnership. And we've also invested there. So Quantum here is their demo uh, experience. This is what their sales reps use to, uh, to demo Sitefinity, their CMS, to their partners and customers. And I'm very happy to, uh, to announce that we are now integrated as the e-commerce platform within the Quantum experience as part of this partnership. Indeed, e-commerce is the platform that Progress is pushing to every partner and customer. There is no one else on their books, just us. And having e-commerce be part of this uh, experience here on the quantum side 
is an important step in that partnership because it cements that partnership. It's not just a piece of paper. It's just it not it's not just great uh, intentions. There are real artifacts that show this happening. So we shipped this uh, actually this week, and. In addition to that, we've invested in building out widgets for this experience. So the quantum demo is really just a, an incarnation of e-commerce. All the widgets that you see over there to the right, this is the toolbox with Insight Finity that is used to build experiences. So we've been able to create some nice components for Insight Finity uh, to be able to, to enable uh, Progress and Insight Finity partners to build out e-commerce solutions faster. For those of you working with SiteCon and Braco, you might be thinking, why is he talking about this? This is not relevant to me. But there is actually a, another point I wanted to make with this, and that is the fact that we know the CMS development uh, slows us down, specifically these things, because it's not at the core of what we do. We are not CMS experts by any stretch of the imagination. You are on the respective CMSs that you use. And so the way we built this is actually by not doing it in-house, which is a new thing for us to work. And it's been a little bumpy to do it, but it has shown us that it can work. So we worked with the, the site doctor in the UK, who's also on this call, thank you, Tim, uh, on building out these widgets to make sure that we do not spend a product team bandwidth on building these things. And I firmly believe that going forward, we can do this more and more. And you will actually see another example of this in just a moment. I hope you, uh, I hope you like that direction. Because at the end of the day, you are the CMS experts. You build solutions on the CMSs. So you will be able to build best practices on those CMSs much better. Another great example is our awesome partner in Sweden, WebMind, who builds out Ucelerate, the, uh, the demo for, uh, for Umbraco. Similar concept, but on Umbraco, WebMind and the guys up there, they have all the knowledge about how to build awesome experiences on, uh, on Umbraco. So of course, they should be the ones building out the, uh, the, uh, the core experiences on top of that particular CMS. So we are doing this more and more, and I think we can, uh, we can do even more in the future. We have 9.3 out, and we have announced it for a couple of months ago, but I do have one more thing to show you on, on what's out today. So this is Avenue Clothing. You've seen this experience again and again over a long, long time. It's almost a little embarrassing at this point. I think it, the original version was done in 2013 or something like that. Uh, so it's, it, it's quite time to do something about it. So I'm happy to announce that we are shipping today Avenue Clothing 2 from Braco, brand new experience that is, uh, that is showcasing even better what e-commerce can do. It demos better to clients, uh, it's a better foundation to build on, but it is primarily a, um, you know, a, um, a springboard to get started. So I hope you like it. And don't do this yet, but I just wanted to say it's available now, and you can actually go to umbracodemo1.ucommerce.net and check it out right now. But don't do it. <laughs> Good. All right. So this is all the things that we've done up to this point. I feel like we have delivered on the promises we made last year. We have also been able to do a little more uh, in, uh, in part due to the partnerships we've done with some of you, uh, your partners out there. And so, now is the time to look at the short-term roadmap. What are we working on right now? And I'm quite excited about some of the things coming up because this will really prove some of the key capabilities of some of the ship, uh, stuff we shipped uh, in April. So first up, what we have today is the new Bolt API. It's running on top of the Lucene search engine. Lucene is great. It's simple to work with. It is a nice experience for developers to work with, and it, it's super fast, but it doesn't scale well. So what we're building right now is the second provider for Bolt, which will enable you uh, when you're ready and when you need scale to actually reconfigure your websites and move them over to a more scalable stack. So the performance numbers you've seen so far is with a very simple search engine that runs on only one box. When we ship version 9.4 with Elasticsearch as a provider, you will gain the ability as partners to scale your solutions across multiple servers so the APIs will not be running on just one box it will be running as, on as many as you want. We're very excited about this, and it's, it's some pretty cool stuff that's going into the engineering work here. The Bolt uh, framework is essentially an abstraction of the search engine be below. Once we have the uh, Elastic Search provider, we can start building out more, and you can too. We're actually simplifying the, that process as we're building out the second one. 
And Søren Skovsbøl, uh, one of the developers on the uh, Bolt team, has a, t- a talk on the tech track that goes into more detail about that. So I hope you're going to join that. We're also building out the Stores app. So what you're seeing here is a tool called Zeppelin. So this is the, the tool that our UX team works in. And so we're building out the Stores app at the moment. We know that uh, we need to scale more for B2B scenarios. So we're building that in. You'll see a nice search capability there. Search is going to be more prevalent uh, in, the, uh, in the platform. And this is just one example. So it's, it's an, a UI that adapts to uh, you know, lots of data, small data, stuff like that. We're also working on product search. So what we have today when you navigate catalogs is what you see there at the top. Horizontal navigation, you click through your catalogs, you've been able to do that for years in e-commerce. The new thing is that right at the top, you can see it says search and you'll have the ability to switch over to search mode instead. And so you can just start issuing your queries um, and, and find what you need faster. So this is part of making digital merchants more efficient when working with e-commerce. And that should be coming out by the end of the year as well. So that's the short-term work roadmap. These are things we're working on right now. Things uh, have been implemented uh, and they are sort of works in progress. Super cool stuff. We have unit tests for, for the Bold API, for example, so we can swap in and out uh, providers uh, to test them automatically. Those tests uh, are made in a way so you can use them as well if you decide to, uh, to use your own, build your own provider. So we're trying to do uh, things that also uh, benefit you as you're building out extensions for your commerce. So what about the long term? What about the next quarters and next quarters? Well, we're at Q4 now, right? We just kicked that off. And it's all about scalability and stores. Don't worry about reading all the text. Just look at my face. Um, you, will have these, uh, you will have these slides later on so you can see all the details. But we're building out scalability for Bolt and the Stores app and a few other things. Each of these milestones are composed of headline features like the scalability and stores smaller fixes and improvements for Condo and Bolt that make everything uh, a little nicer, and bug fixes, of course. That's the composition for each milestone. We're going to look at supporting Sitecore 10 in Q1 next year, and we're going to unify definition system in uh, Q1 as well to make sure that we prepare for Q2 when we uh, build out Condo extensibility. Espen from the front-end team will have a uh, talk about Condo extensibility uh, on the tech track, so please join that if you feel like. And of course, we're going to revamp promotions engine and order management so that uh, they are moved onto the new stack. So we, we know what to do the rest of the year. We also know what to do uh, next year, actually. And in all this, of course, um, your feedback is incredibly important to us. We are able to rejigger the, the, the big lines based on what it is that, uh, that you guys need. So please keep the feedback coming. We have uh, an email that we'd like you to uh, to write to. It's called feedback at ucommerce.net. All the emails that come in there are triaged by the product team, scored against our product roadmap, so we know what we need to focus on going forward. So there's a user score attached to each and every piece of feedback that you send to feedback at ucommerce.net. So keep that in mind. All right, this is where it gets a little fussier. This is the long, long term. This is sort of the three-year plan, maybe five-year plan. And I'm incredibly excited about what we are about to show you uh, because it's not concrete. These are just challenges that we know we need to tackle, but we do not have a concrete answer to it. And we'd like your inputs on it as well. So the first thing is we have .NET Net Core looming out there in, uh, or looming is, is, is not even the right word. It's here, right? And we need to support it. But the challenge for, of, with .NET Core for us is the fact that we have an Umbraco, we have a Sitefinity, and we have a Sitecore, and we are guaranteed that they're not going to switch to .NET Core at the same time. So rather than having six CMSs, we're going to uh, three CMSs, we're going to have six, right? So we need a solution to this. And we have been working on getting ready for .NET Core for years now, re-architecting the internals of e-commerce, but we have not made the switch yet. I think I've come up, or we've come up, with the, uh, with the way to go to deal with this. And it is this. And this is actually the big, big thing. With the new next versions of e-commerce, one of the underlying beats of the platform is that we need to start the move to cloud. So you may be wondering, well, e-commerce deploys to the cloud already, so why is, why is this different than what we're doing? 
You can deploy to Azure, you can deploy to your own infrastructure, you can deploy wherever you want, right? The move to the cloud is about turning e-commerce into a SaaS offering over time. It's about making the APIs, all the offerings of e-commerce, much more easily accessible to you as partners. And it's about moving into the future, basically, where scalability and things like that uh, are things that you can deal with yourself if you want to, but you can also let us do it. That's the idea. But this is sort of a, not sort of, this is a big, big move, and it, we're going to have to grow as Hanus says, to make it happen. But this is where we're heading as a company, as a product. This is the movement that is underlying every, every decision that we're making from today and going forward. So with that, I don't know if you remember the slides last year, but they basically said we were humble, we were confident, and we were determined because we needed to be really humble based on uh, what had gone on. Today, I'm happy to say that we're more confident than ever. We are more determined than ever, but we're still humble because we still need to listen. That's e-commerce 9 and the future. Thank you very much for listening. Please join uh, myself on the tech track later on. Uh, our uh, good friends Han, uh, Gunnar and uh, Michael on the BIS tracks and we'll wrap it all up by the end of the day. Thank you very much. <laughs>